Islam has been protected by the scholars that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen and favored throughout time in every single century. One of the titles that gets applied to these type of scholars, it is the title of Shaykh al-Islam. Whenever you hear this statement, generally for most people, it is one name that comes up, and this is the name of Ahmed ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, Shaykh al-Islam, the Shaykh of Islam, Ahmed ibn Taymiyyah. He was a man that was born in Damascus, and from an early age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with strong memorization and strong understanding, and he gave him knowledge. He was from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only blessed with knowledge, but he also blessed them with action from a very young age. One day his family decides to go out for a picnic and he goes away from them and he stays home. And then the family, they go enjoy themselves and then they come back and then they tell him, why did you stay behind? Why did you not come and join us for this picnic? Why did you not come and spend time with your family? And he responded to them. He says, whatever you've went to has not helped you. You have returned now and you probably forgot about the enjoyment. He memorized so many works of the Sunnah, whether it was the Sahih Imam Bukhari and the Sahih Imam Muslim or works of fiqh, it didn't matter from a young age, he was memorizing to the point where his fame began spreading and the people started to say, there's a young boy by the name of Ahmed in Damascus, in Dimashq, that is like no other, a person that we have never seen the likes of. And then the people begin going and traveling to go and see him while he's still a young boy to the point one of the scholars from Hadab decides, I want to go to Damascus. I want to go see this boy for myself. He comes and he gets to meet Ahmed ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, Shaykh al-Islam. And at this time he's a young boy. So he tells them that board that you have in your hand, I want you to write these hadith down. So he begins writing the hadith that he's narrating to him down. And then he tells him, can you tell me what I said? He begins to read the hadith back to him from the board. And then the scholar tells him, I want you to erase it. And then tell me what I said to you. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he begins to narrate this back to him, back and forth. And there's no mistakes that he is making to the point where the scholar says, if this boy lives a long life, he is going to be a miracle and a sign from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now imagine today you and I are here talking about Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. What a miracle he has turned out to be. What a sign from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has turned out to be. We know that he has written over 300 books. It does not matter what kind of field you wanted a book written in. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah would author books and sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would put so much barakah in his time that between Dhuhr and Asr he would be able to recite books of Aqeedah that are 70 pages, all being in jail at the same time. Earning this title of Shaykh al-Islam or the fame that he had did not come easy for Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. It did not mean that from that young age that he was in that the people realized the prominence that he had, the strong knowledge that he was building. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept him safe to the point that in the dunya nothing touched him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his body go through test, but his iman would be protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for so many years, he would be going from jail to jail to jail. You could even say from the time that he reached the age of maturity, calamities after one another would just begin to fall on him. But this did not reduce the amount of worship that he would do to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the point where they said about him that he would spend majority of his nights worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through prayer or he would spend it through the recitation of the Quran or going and reviewing a matter of knowledge and his days would be spent in him giving sadaqah and his days would be spent in him defending the lands of the Muslims and his days would be spent in fasting. This was Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. The people knew how generous he was even though he was very poor. Even though he did not have a lot of wealth, the wealth that he had, he would give it away freely to the point where there are so many stories of people coming to him and he would take off the clothing that he would have and give it to them right then and there. And he would not even have anything that would be waiting for him at home. Why did he go through all of this? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him from those that were chosen to preserve this deen of ours, someone that is going to be blessed not only with knowledge, but he's going to be blessed with the ability to act upon this knowledge. But again, like we said, this came with many difficulties. The envy of the people would grow and they would be jealous of him and they would begin to spread rumors about things that he did not do and things that he did not say to the point where he finds himself in jail in Egypt. 
He finds himself in jail in Damascus. He finds himself, whatever, whatever calamities are happening, people will find a way to blame it on Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi rahimahullah. But he would continue to author works and he would continue to benefit the Ummah to the point where today we are here sitting and talking about Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi rahimahullah. Now what were the struggles that he had to go through? There was a period in his life where he was in jail for so long and he was prevented from teaching. But his students just decided, you know what? It is not fair what is happening to our teacher. We are also going to go to jail with him and we are going to learn from him. Really when you look at the life of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, you see the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appear on him and you see the promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made really be fulfilled. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, Innama Indeed, with every difficult situation, ease is going to come. He struggled so much for the sake of La ilaha illallah. Today, you and I are sitting here talking about him. And it has been over 800 years since the passing of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. His books continue to be printed. His works continue to be studied. His works continue to be referred back to when it comes to our scholars, when it comes to those that have left a great impact upon this ummah. But again, they were not achieved easily. They were achieved through struggle, through torture, through being in jail, through the people being prevented from him and so on. Why did he have to go through all of these things? Because he decided that he has to always stick to the haqq, that he has to protect the aqidah of the people of Sunnah, that he had to protect the ways that Islam came in its most purest forms. And if he would give up on it, who knows what would happen to it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with Shaykh al-Islam in Taymiyyah for what the claim that the people made against him and for what the torture that they had to make him go through. But you and I, there's a lot we can learn from the story of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Sometimes, as we know that he died from a sickness while only being a few days removed from jail. Sometimes you and I could go through life and none of the struggles that we go through actually get answered in this dunya. Nobody actually notices the efforts that we are putting in. Nobody notices the du'as that we are making. Nobody notices the efforts that you and I are put, putting in or the calamities and the disasters that we are going through. But at the end of it, we realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is all seeing. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is testing us. And it is going to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that never wastes the reward of those that do righteous deeds. Our realization of the sacrifices that we made might never come in this dunya. But it will come on the day of judgment without a doubt when we are admitted into the gardens of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us.